Hey guys, an extra, extra sleepy, sleepy reader here. Um, I wanted to give you my thoughts on three comic books I read today. Uh, I read them when I was less sleepy. Now, where did I put them? Somewhere under my stuff here. So yeah, I read Saga, Adventures of Superman number five, and for mature readers, duh, um, Sex Criminals, number one, by Matt Fraction and a fellow named, uh, an artist I've never heard of before, let me get his name, Chip Zdarsky. Um, I liked all these comic books. I, I liked Sex Criminals. It wasn't at all what I was expecting. It was much more, um, felt much more like an indie comic, if you will. See if I can show any of the art. I won't show any of the dirty stuff. Um, it is an X-rated comic book, I guess you'd say. You know, not triple X. It's not pornographic, but it's very upfront and un unedited about sex. And sex, sex is what this issue is all about. We get the. Um, sex and masturbation and um, kind of being young and not even knowing how to ask questions about these kinds of things. But of course all a sex that has a superpower to go with it. Um, so I guess the artwork reminds me of kind of an indie book in the old-fashioned sense of um, not at all mainstream, you know, doesn't look at all like the art you'd ever see in a Marvel or DC comic book. Um, it has that kind of personal autobiographical feel to it. And, uh, you know, if I didn't know it was by this, you know, star of mainstream comics, Matt Fraction, and I didn't know that Image Comics was a big deal, other than the really slick coloring, I might have thought it was kind of like a low-budget, low-circulation kind of comic book aimed at a few aficionados, you know, like uh, like American Splendor used to be, or um, Love and Rockets to an extent, or there's other things I can't even think of that were more lo-fi, so to speak. Um, but this isn't lo-fi because the art's very good, but also the the coloring is very advanced. Um, very slick. A very nice coloring. I should find the name of the colorist. Uh, it must, Chip Zdarsky must have done his own coloring. There's someone uh, credited for color flatting. I will have to say because it <clears throat> has a lot of those kind of autobiographical, non-sort of superpowered based uh, indie comics used to do, it kind of told a lot of the story as in a kind of uh, <clears throat> narrative overlay. So someone telling you about their personal history. and we, But uh, with lots of interesting visual tricks with the older narrator appearing in the panels with her younger self as she narrates what's going on. So I found that a little distancing. I wasn't as deeply involved in the comic book as I might have been with a different narrative technique. But by the end, I was really interested to see what was going to come next. It's all... You know, most of us who read previews and all kinds of advanced publicity know that these people commit crimes after, so this is a spoiler for a few people, um, after having sex, they stop time and they commit crimes. That is only beginning at the end of this book. So um, I'm very interested to see where it goes. As we start commit, as they start committing crimes and stuff, is a more traditional kind of plot going to take over, or is it going to retain this kind of indie feel, you know, going even further in the direction of what feels like just a personal comic book than Matt Fraction did in Hawkeye? And of course, it's not a, it's not an autobiographical comic book directly because his lead character is female, and as far as I know, Matt Fraction doesn't stop time by having sex, but certainly he's putting a lot of his personal understanding of sex into this book, which is interesting, might make some people uncomfortable. 
The one thing, it's very small, so it's not really a criticism, in the, and I'm going to curse here, because I'm just going to be reading what they say at the back, it says, this book is dedicated to the brave men and women who like to fuck. Um, but the book as a whole doesn't have that feeling, oh, we like to do it. Um, we're naughty, we're being bad. It's The rest of the book struck me as a more honest, uh, not trying to be cool kind of look at SEX. So, definitely a good book for if, if you are interested in the kinds of things I just said. Uh, not for people who just want fun, goofy escapism. It's a little more serious than that, I think. Um, then... Uh, Saga, another mature book. This particular issue didn't have anything shocking in it. You know, no giant testicles or anything. Um, and in fact, it didn't have any, you know, wild zingers of a plot twist or turn as we kind of uh, got used to in Saga from the beginning. And you could see in the last issue, uh, which I just caught up on, um, that... He's taken a, Vaughn, the writer, has taken a swerve away from the big cliffhanger of the end of the last six-issue arc and is going back, slowing things down, filling in a lot of details, making a lot more in terms of smaller character moments. It, to me, it seems, it's good, I enjoyed reading it, but it seems like he's developing all these smaller threads and... We're not as on target, we're not as focused as we were in the first 12 issues, um, and especially the first six issues. So I do wonder, you know, what's Saga going to look like in another 12 issues? Is the focus going to keep spreading out and spreading out? And will these smaller threads have the same impact? You know, like uh, relationships between some of the minor characters are developing that are um, almost start to feel to me a little bit distracting... I start forgetting about where we're headed. Um, so anyway, a another striking thing that I'm noticing more and more in these last two issues is the ways in which uh, they make this far future fantasy science fiction world look like our world with get people filling up their gas tank and people making phone calls. And after a certain point you know, and the media being the same, and, and kind of the sense of suburban suburban uh, houses and stuff. After a certain point, will this seem too thinly veiled version of our world? I don't know. It's just kind of a... just a weird little note that I've started to notice here. But, uh, so, a, a very good but lower-key issue. And then, strangely, the one I really enjoyed the most was The Adventures of Superman. Um, to the work, So it had a 20-page story and a 10-page story in it. And um, <clears throat> each gave us a fun look at Superman, uh, different artists with different styles. The 10-page uh, the, the story is by the Pia Guerrera, who was the artist of Why the Last Man. The, uh, the art of the first section is by... Um, uh, hard to say name. And they don't put the credits at the front of the story, which is a drag, so it's hard to find them. Uh, Yidre Sinar, who I've seen some of his art in Earth 2, and that was good. This is even better. His art is excellent here. The, and the story is good, but it doesn't... The story that Yidre Sinar draws and is, that is written by... Now I've lost track of Edmondson, I guess. Um... It feels... Inc it, I really enjoyed it, and but it, it felt like half of a story or something, and maybe there's an alien princess named Arya. Maybe if I knew my Superman lore better, I would understand who they're talking about. Um, but nevertheless, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And Superman seems in particular to be a great character for these short, one-off kind of stories, these little bits because he is kind of mythical, and and that's it just plays on that very nicely. And it almost seems like writers often do a better job emotionally if they're forced to do a 10 or 20 page story and stop there. 
So anyway, I'm really looking forward to more. I have some back issues of Adventures of Superman that I haven't gotten around to reading, and I'm I'm just really looking forward to reading more of these mini Superman stories with the red trunks on it. So uh, I think that that'll be all the comic book reviews I do this week. Although if I get the chance and I've, because I have all these like four or five issues in a row that I still need to read to catch up on, I might do some catching up videos where I review a, a string of issues together if I have time. And I also hope to continue with my vlog countdown, which I guess I've skipped for a few days. And I apologize for that, but I will be back soon. Bye-bye.